Hey folks, today I have a video about airbrushing. I've recently gotten into airbrushing uh, due to all the uh, foam models that I've been getting recently and working on. And I've found that uh, foam models really do lend themselves very well to airbrushing. As you can see from this picture, I got uh, Banana Hobbies or the FMS uh, FW190 uh, from Banana Hobbies. And uh, what I did is I went, ahead, went around it with some uh, paint and an airbrush and sort of cleaned up half of it and left the other side just sort of stock so you can see the difference. Um, let's take a look at some of the details. If you look right off the bat, take a look at the wheel wells. You can see one side I touched up, the right side here, uh, and uh, you can see it looks all nice and clean in there and it's all painted the same color. You can see the retractable landing gear unit that I went ahead and painted also instead of leaving it black. And then over on the left side you can see the one that I didn't do anything to and how you can see some of those little uh, uh, you know, where areas where they missed where they didn't paint and of course the retract mechanism and so forth where uh, you know you can still see that it is a retract mechanism whereas on the right side it sort of disappears. Um, also the gun detail, if you can see these two guns that are close to the cowl on either side, you know the stock one here on the left side of the picture uh, just shows it glued on and you know it looks okay but you can kind of tell it's got that little plastic piece on the bottom that you know matches the surface of the wing and here on the right side I went ahead and painted it up so it sort of disappears with the model and you can see this entire wing here uh, how those details just uh, uh, really look a little much nicer when you can't see those little black areas uh, it looks less like a model and more like a like a real airplane uh, let's take a look at the other side again you can see all those model uh, details that you can kind of see uh, also uh, taking a look at all your uh, control horns and everything uh, you can see that they're uh, they're translucent, attached to the aileron, and you got you know white servo horns. Uh, same thing right here. Now, if we go all the way over to the other side, you can see how those things kind of disappear and how I painted those. Here, let's look at this one. You can see uh, it's almost uh, almost disappears and uh, makes the model look uh, much much more scale. So, anyway, you can see with just a little bit of airbrushing, uh, it really kind of makes some of those scale details uh, look much much nicer. Uh, one other thing also that, uh, that airbrushing really helps with is repairs. Um, uh, one item here that uh, you can really see the detail of, uh, this is an area that I glued and some of the, uh, uh, some of the contact cement ran out and uh, really kind of messed it up and you can see the foam sticking out and all that. Well the other side was the same way. Now with a little bit of airbrushing uh, you can kind of get rid of all that and it cleans it up. It makes the whole thing look much much nicer. Um, now, uh, to show you how all this uh, works and how easy actually and how cheap it is actually to airbrush, let's take a look at some of the equipment and I'll uh, show you how it all works. To get started in airbrushing, it's really pretty simple. There's only two components you really need and that is the airbrush and the compressor. Um, the airbrush portion usually comes with a, uh, with a cord here and uh, you can see this is the first one I ever bought. I got this from, uh, from Hobby King. Uh, you fill your paint up in here and you can see I have a little bit of paint in here that uh, I'm doing the FW190 with right now and uh, it comes with a cord okay that plugs into any compressor uh, and that's really about it you need the compressor as well down at the bottom I got this uh, airbrush from Hobby King I think it was about 20 bucks the compressor is a, uh, a, uh, a three gallon 100 pound compressor I got from Harbor Freight Tools it was about $40 so you're looking at about 60 70 bucks to really set yourself up with with an airbrush that you need and, uh, and, and you're ready to go. Uh, the operation of the thing, this thing's pretty simple. Um, once you have your pressure set up on your, on, your, uh, on your compressor, really when you press this button down, it blows air out. It adjusts the amount of air depending on how hard you push on it. And then as you pull back on it, it actually allows more and more and more paint out as you pull it back. So if you pull it back a little bit and push it down, you only get a little bit of paint. And you can push it down, get no paint, and then slowly as you draw it back, it will let more and more paint out. So it puts out a very thin layer of paint, and uh, it's uh, kind of like uh, the surgical scalpel of paint brushes. It lets you really have uh, of, a really good control of, uh, of uh, where the paint goes. Um, here's how you set up the compressor to get the uh, pressure that you need. Operating your compressor for your airbrush is pretty darn simple. You only have two gauges. This gauge over here shows the tank pressure, and this gauge here shows the pressure that's actually coming out of 
the airbrush itself. Now we can put 100 pounds of pressure in this tank because that's what it's designed for. Right now I have 70 pounds in the tank, but I only really want uh, uh, 35 coming out of the, uh, the airbrush. So when I press the airbrush down and hold the button down, and I'll do that right here, you can see it shows the actual pressure that's coming out of the gun, which right now is at 35 pounds. And that's what you want, is 35, about 35 pounds. As you airbrush, you'll figure out what kind of pressure you like to paint with, but that seems to work well for me. Um, and the way you adjust that is, is you always want to have more pressure uh, in the tank, and then as you hold that button down on your airbrush itself, you turn this dial here and you adjust the pressure you want. Right now it's at 45, and I, what I do is I adjust it down so I get 35 even, just about coming out of there. And now it's adjusted. Now you have 35 pounds coming out of your gun, you release your button, and of course the pressure is going to go back a little up a little more because there's a little more pressure in the line now. Now it's set, and you usually don't have to touch it after this it, once you have your pressure set to where you like it. Uh, now you can go ahead and fill your paint uh, and uh, go ahead and paint. When it comes to paints for airbrushing, this is really all you need. Uh, you need uh, the paint color that you're using, you need uh, some thinner, and then you need something to mix them with uh, if you're going to be mixing colors of paint. Uh, there are really two paints that I use. I use the Tamiya and I use the uh, um, uh, Testers. Uh, they're about the same price, about $3.60 each, $4 each or something, but you can see with the Tamiya you get a whole bunch, a whole lot more uh, for your money. Uh, but the advantage of the Testers is they have way more color, so a lot of times you'll find exactly what you need. The jars are small, but you use very little paint. The, uh, the uh, uh, airbrush is uh, pretty efficient. Um, and uh, you know, then you'll need some thinner to thin out the paint and really all you're going to do is ma mix about whatever, whatever paint you're going to use, you're going to use, mix, put in about 20% thinner and uh, that's really all you need. Um, what I usually do is I use these mixing jars and I use these little pipettes that you get uh, and um, uh, what you do is I take one of these glass jars and let's say I'm going to use uh, this paint right here, I'll fill it up maybe halfway or so, then I'll take a pipette and I'll go ahead and get some of this uh, thinner and I'll just add about what I think is about 20%. Doesn't need to be perfect, you're just gonna eyeball it. The thinner is there just to keep the paint going through the airbrush without clogging it up. So, uh, and then once it's in here, you close the top, you mix it up, and uh, you're ready to go. The paint that is in here, and here's an example of one. This is a paint I use for my uh, Starmax F15. I mixed it 50-50 with basically um, um, with white, uh, uh, with, a, uh, with a gloss white uh, and with a, uh, a flat white, so I have kind of a satin mix to it, uh, and then I put about 20% thinner in there, and then you shake it up. So anytime I need like a satin paint, I now have it, and it's all here, and it's closed up in this bottle. Um, and that's really it, guys. It's pretty simple uh, to do this. Uh, really, all it is is the paint in a jar with 20% thinner, and then you go ahead and you put it in your airbrush, and you paint away, and the results are pretty amazing. To demonstrate how easy this is, I'm going to do some painting for you here in real time. And what I have here is uh, light blue, it's XF23, it's a Tamiya paint. Uh, it's close enough for me to match the uh, bottom of this uh, FW190, uh, and uh, so you really don't need, uh, need to really add anything to it. If you want to get real specific and get the color exactly right, you can mix away and mix, uh, mix it as close as you want. But what I have here is some of the XF23 in here with a little bit of thinner, about, like I said before, about 20%. And uh, I leave this on the shelf so I can touch up the paint, paint plane whenever I want. But what you do is you sort of mix it up, make sure it's thoroughly mixed, and then you go ahead and take the uh, take the top off of it. Uh, you take your airbrush, you pop the top off of it. Now I've already uh, set up my compressor, my compressor. I've already filled it up uh, with uh, with air, so it's ready to go. And what I'm going to do is just pour a little bit of paint in here, and I'll go ahead and I'll put the top back on here. And I'll take this top and I'll go ahead and just put it right back on again. And now I'm ready to paint. Now I'm going to start off here with the wheel well. Let me go ahead and zoom in there for you. You can see how the wheel well, they missed painting a lot. And if you want to paint the wheel well a different color, uh, you can do that. But you can see here, I'll just go ahead and start right off. You see this edge right here where they didn't quite paint? You can clean all that up. And you can see all those areas of white just kind of disappear. A couple other details that I like to do, for example, uh, this area of plastic here, they molded it pretty close but didn't get it quite right, so by spraying that down, you can watch as I spray it, it pretty much begins to blend into the rest of the airplane. 
and you can see there it looks almost just like the rest of the plane. It really, really blends in well. Uh, on this side of the wheel well, on the inside, you can see I'll go ahead and touch up the white area, get it all cleaned up. Now to speed things up, I just went ahead and uh, did the most of the rest of the center part on, off camera. And you can see how the wheel wells look a whole lot nicer. After painting this uh, front section here, I painted this back section and it all kind of blends in. Uh, the paint is just about dry, but uh, not, uh, not totally. Now let's go ahead and move on to something else. Now when it comes to painting something like this control linkage, uh, you're just going to go ahead and just spray it. Uh, but we don't want to get this, uh, this area, the black and the white uh, decal, um, uh, painted as well. So all you really need to do is just put something over top of it just to mask it. Uh, and then you just go ahead and, and you spray. And you can see that will pretty much prevent any of the paint from getting there. And messing up your decal. And just little shots of paint really here and there is all you need. And as you let this thing dry, it will pretty much disappear. And you can see, uh, just by putting a little piece of paper on there, it will uh, protect your decal or any other colors you may have. Now moving on to an area like this gun, uh, you can just take a little bit of masking tape, anything that you have really, and you can just kind of wrap it over this part of the, uh, of the gun itself to prevent uh, any paint from getting on there. And then once you have that on there, uh, you can go ahead and uh, spray it. Now, because I don't want to get any on the top side of the wing, I'll also use uh, a little shield, a little mask shield here to kind of keep it from getting on there. So, but very carefully, you can see here, just little shots of paint. You don't have to spray it too heavy, just little bits. And you can see that damage above the gun. Cleans that up too, gets rid of that. But uh, you can see with just a little bit of painting here, uh, it's pretty precise where this airbrush sprays. And same thing on the other side. I'll go ahead and uh, use this as a paint shield here. I'll cover that up. You can get a little bit closer if you need to. And just spray the part you need to get at. Let me do a little more on this side again. Darken it up a little bit. There we go. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now as I zoom in on that, once that dries, it'll match the color. And I can go ahead and remove the mask. And you can see, voila, we have a really nice uh, gun detail. And uh, rather than seeing the uh, black plastic here, like you see over here, and I'll paint that one next, you have a, uh, a nice, uh, what appears to be a gun barrel pointing out of there without that uh, ugly plastic area. Now one of my favorite things to paint that I think really cleans up the model nice is the retract unit. Uh, I think it really makes it look more like a model and uh, less toy-like. And uh, you can see here, just by spray painting over this thing, uh, you really don't need any masking for it or anything. But uh, just spraying over it, just little short bursts of paint. You get this whole thing cleaned up, even the inside mechanism there. And you want to make sure you spray from all angles so you don't miss any portions, but just light paint. You want to be careful probably not to get too much in front of the, in the, uh, in the retract mechanism here, because you can see the, uh, even from here I can see the jack screw. As long as you don't get too much in there, you're fine. But uh, anyway, you can see with just a little bit of paint and just a few seconds worth, uh, you can see it really cleans it up. And again, it makes it look more like a model and uh, much less uh, toy-like. Now here's a before shot, before touching up anything of the uh, right wing. Now take a look at it after the touching up has been done and you can see how a lot of those things disappear. A lot of those uh, uh, inconsistencies or non-scale looking things just sort of disappear with that paint and uh, really make the model look uh, much, much better. Now when you're done with all your airbrushing, uh, cleanup is real simple. And all you really need to do is just uh, take the cap off and uh, you'll clean that top cap out with uh, a, a towel and some, some thinner and so forth. But if you have paint left in there, it's kind of expensive, so <laughs> you want to save what you can. Usually just pour it all right back in there. The next step is you take a towel or a rag and just kind of clean out as much as you can out of the inside. You can see here by putting a rag in here, it'll save you a whole bunch of thinner because you'll get a majority of the paint out of here to start with uh, and then you can go ahead and put some thinner in there. 
Now using your pipette and a little bit of thinner, you can go ahead and get some in there. Just uh, pour it right into your uh, airbrush. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and spray this thing, okay, onto a piece of cardboard or something. You're also gonna put your finger over it. And what that's gonna do is cause the air to go backwards. And what it does is it blows through both sides of the valve, okay? So you wanna blow air through this way, blow air out the front, and then go ahead and dump this. And you're gonna do this a couple of times. And before you know it, the airbrush will be completely clean and uh, all the paint will be out of it and they'll be ready to put another color in. As you can see from this, after uh, running some uh, thinner through here, put your finger over it, uh, blowing the air backwards uh, through the thing, uh, you'll get it all cleaned out. If you need to put a rag in there again, just to get some more out, you can. But uh, you'll just clean the top off and uh, it's good to, good to go again. So it's really uh, pretty much that easy to clean. Now here's a few examples where airbrushing uh, really uh, pays off. You can see here the underside of the wing of a B25. Lower right hand corner has some scarring where there was some uh, contact cement sticking out and after removing it it uh, left some exposed foam. Uh, then you have the servo, you have the horn and the clevis and the wires but you apply a little bit of uh, matched paint. You can see the underside surface here. It's now nice and clean, looks much better and it hides all those uh, imperfections. Also the underside here of the elevator of the uh, B25 from FMS like the FMS P38 has a lot of linkages under the tail and it really sticks out kind of looks ugly so once again match the same color paint and you spray over it and here you have a really nice cleaned up underside of, of this thing and those things those uh, little white details and rods and stuff don't don't stick out at you and it just looks much much better the side uh, of the B25 here's an example where uh, the paint lines didn't match up from the cowl to the fuselage and uh, by just uh, using a piece of paper as a paint shield you can uh, cover over the uh, upper uh, darker surface uh, and match up the lines and then go ahead and spray uh, with the underside color and you can see here that now the lines match up and now you have a nice uh, detail so it's really good for working on this probably one of the best places uh, that an airbrush is good for is uh, damage uh, or just scratches of the paint now here's a picture of the B25 or I'm sorry, the B-17 where uh, we repaired some uh, the engine and you can see all that exposed foam and uh, in this next shot after cleaning it up you can see it looks fantastic. In fact, it looks weathered almost and uh, really looks a lot better. Now here's the underside shot of the B-17 uh, and again you can see that foam scarring. All foam airplanes are like this and uh, when, they, when they get damaged and with a little bit of paint you can see here in this next shot it's all cleaned up so uh, almost uh, almost having a foam plane uh, it's almost a necessity almost to have an airbrush to keep them uh, looking good and it's real easy to do um, anyway guys as you can see from the video airbrushing is real easy uh, it really cleans up your airplanes and uh, it's relatively inexpensive to do and I found that uh, my models uh, just look so much uh, more stellar uh, with having an airbrush uh, to clean up uh, some of these imperfections Anyway, guys, uh, that concludes this video. I want to thank everyone for uh, checking this out. And uh, check us out on Facebook. Check out rcinformer.com. Once again, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.